Upon arriving on the assessed worksite, we first take a look at the tree and make a work plan and determine the drop zones, and then we secure the site. The climber has to prepare the work equipment he needs for the job. He decides to use the spikes because he needs to take down the tree. For pruning, the climber shouldn't use the spikes because they damage the tree. Climbing spikes have to be secured and set tightly. Working with spikes, the climber uses a steel core lanyard and a lifeline for a secondary attachment. Prior to the climb, he has to adjust the lanyard to the optimal climbing position. The climber's legs have to be straight and his arms have to reach the middle of the trunk. He climbs with his knees away from the trunk that the spikes grab well. For the ascent, he makes a few small steps until the lanyard is in horizontal position. The last step before swinging the lanyard is aligning both spikes at the same height so that the spikes hold well and are equally laden. For the cutting, he needs to be double secured, so he makes an anchor point for lifeline below the lanyard. Before he starts to cut, he makes a verbal warning. He uses a step cut and makes the final cut afterwards. The climber always has to hold the chainsaw with both hands and use a chain break when appropriate. When in motion, the climber has to harness the chainsaw on the carabineer. The climber moves the lanyard and secondary attachment up to the next working position. If the climber finds out that his position is not optimal or not safe, he has to readjust his position to the required position. Cuts have to be made below the climber's neck and out of the kickback zone. If the rope gets stuck under the cut branches below, the climber has to stop working and ask his groundsman to remove the branches from the rope. When the groundsman finishes and moves away from the drop zone, the climber can return to his work. If the climber needs to hold to a bigger branch, he can use a sling for catching the branch. The sling has to be long enough and put on correctly. When he reaches the top of the tree and the trunk measures approximately 8 to 10 centimeters in diameter, he decides in which direction he is going to cut the top off. He adjusts the anchor point and his position prior to making the cuts so that he is in the safest position possible. The climber puts in the sink cut, which should not be deeper than one quarter of the trunk diameter. He makes a verbal warning and proceeds to the felling cut. The felling cut has to be placed slightly lower than the sink cut and he has to leave an appropriate hinge. When he finishes with the felling cut, he has to apply the chain break and try to put the chainsaw on the harness. After the top goes off, he has to be ready for the trunk swing. Using the spikes, the climber descends to the position of the following cut. He should cut such pieces that he can handle with safety. He puts in two cuts which are not aligned and the second one is placed lower than the first one. After the cuts are made, he puts the chainsaw on the harness, examines the drop zone, makes a verbal warning and drops the pieces of the trunk onto the ground. When the trunk is short enough for tree falling from the ground, he descends with a lifeline which can also be used for emergency situations during work. After the descent, he has to unfasten the line and the lanyard from the harness and install the retrieval ball at the end of the lifeline. Then he makes a verbal warning and retrieves the anchor point from the tree. When he puts all the equipment away from the side, he can cut the rest of the tree trunk from the ground. For tree falling, he has to put in the sink cuts to the direction of the fall. Afterwards, he continues with the felling cut. He has to make appropriate warnings and observe the side around him. 
Before the tree falls, nobody should be around. Depending on the circumstances, he uses wedges or the corner cut to control the tree. When the tree starts to fall, the climber has to move to a safe place and watch tree until it hits the ground.